So hey everyone, uh, I'm Yuan from the JavaScript advocacy team here at Microsoft. And in this demo, you'll see how you can build your own serverless AI chatbot, yet another one for today, uh, but this time using your own documents and data. So first, uh, let's get an overview of uh, what we'll be talking about. So I put you directly the GitHub link uh, of the repo if you're curious, so you don't have to hang on for the final slide. And yeah, instead of this uh, animation in here, uh, let me first show you a deployed version of the application. So uh, for the demo purpose, we've taken the scenario of a support chatbot uh, for this content so real estate rental company. And uh, what's, in, what's interesting in there is that we used a set of PDF company documents uh, to answer users' questions like how to search and book rentals. And uh, we want to give, we keep the answer grounded in that context. So here uh, we get an answer. And uh, when you get an answer, you also get links back uh, to the source documents that were used uh, so you can check the result. So for example, uh, let's check this first one here. And uh, you can check that, yeah, the answer uh, were correct. Uh, basically, you can see the source that was used to generate this answer. Uh, you can also see that it suggests a few follow-up questions linked to the first question I asked. Uh, so yeah, you can go on with the cover session like that. And um, yeah, what's Interesting in there is that basically everything uh, in this sample was made so you can reuse and customize the code for your very own use case and basically use that as an accelerator uh, to build your own application. Um, uh, you see that we have the GitHub repo in there and uh, you can see also that we are uh, one star short of 700, so feel free to help us with that. <laughs> and then uh, let me go back to the slides in there. So. Why uh, is this sample maybe interesting uh, for you? The first thing is that uh, it's cheap, and I believe, to be honest, it's one of the cheapest end-to-end -end AI sample that we have uh, currently. We used free tier by default for everything and pay as you go for uh, Azure OpenAI request. So basically, if you deploy it, it will only cost uh, your, for your Azure OpenAI calls. It's based on data that you provide, and it's very easy to customize for other use cases. Uh, we use PDF uh, as the source data in there, but you can change it uh, from to use any data sources, like for example, Microsoft Graph, uh, to use, I don't know, CSV, YouTube videos, whatever, uh, that may be useful for your use case. Something also interesting is that it can run entirely locally. You don't even have to deploy it uh, if you want just to experiment and test it. Uh, we're using Olyama, which is a tool that allows you to run uh, local AI models. Uh, it will download and run an emulator for you. It can even support the, uh, the OpenAI API. So we use that in our sample to, uh, so that if you don't deploy it, you can run the sample locally. And uh, it's also one of our simplest end to end sample uh, with JavaScript. Uh, so it's easy to customize the code, uh, even if you're not a JavaScript expert. And it's easy also to integrate with other platforms like Power Platform. Uh, you could use a workflow that makes call that to the API if you don't want to use uh, the UI part. So yeah, uh, it can be repurposed in many different ways. As for the architecture, uh, we use Static Web Apps uh, to host our web client in there, and it communicates uh, through HTTP call to our serverless API, which is hosted with Azure function. We have a few functions, one that is used to upload the PDF files. It could be reused uh, for other kinds of documents. Once you upload a document, it will be stored in blob storage, uh, so we can retry the PDF, the original documents later. Uh, we will also extract the text from the PDF, uh, send it to Azure OpenAI to create vectors from that text and store everything in Cosmos DB. We'll be also using Cosmos DB uh, to perform our vector search. I will talk a bit more about that later. And of course, we use also Azure OpenAI to generate uh, the answer using uh, LLMs. So uh, talking a bit about the technical stack for the backend, we're using Node.js and TypeScript with the Longchain JS framework and everything runs on uh, Azure function. As for Longchain, it's an open source framework uh, that makes it easy to create complex AI workflows like this one. And it comes with a lot of components and integration. For example, uh, loading a PDF is just one line of code. I will show you that later. So it's easy to replace it uh, with something else. 
For the front end, uh, we're using web components. So basically, you can reuse the chat component that I've shown you uh, in basically any kind of uh, technologies, whether it's Angular, React, Vue, whatever you're using. You can reuse the, the web component because it's compatible simply with uh, anything, as we host that uh, on static web app. So now, before diving uh, a bit into the uh, the code sample, let's talk a bit about the problem that we are trying to solve in there. So when working with AI models, there are some challenges that we are facing. Sometimes the LLM makes mistakes when generating information, and the data that has been used to train the models may be out of date or may come from let's say, shady of untrustworthy sources uh, like social media. And all of that makes it difficult to tell if a generated information is correct. So to solve these issues, uh, we use the technique that's called retrieval augmented generation, or RAG for short. And RAG is a combination of two components. First, we have a retriever that will fetch information uh, from the knowledge base that may be relevant to the question that uh, you're asking. And we use a generator, an LLM, to generate the answer. So this combination uh, allows for more precise and relevant answer by using uh, data that you provide instead of relying on the model's training data. And now, uh, why is RAG useful? Uh, you can see that we use that in many different samples. Uh, first, it's cheap because you don't have to spend money to train expensive models and you can use the existing one. You also maintain the knowledge base yourself separately from the AI model, so you can use even multiple data sources. And it means that uh, you can make sure that the data will always be up to date. And uh, it also generates factual responses using a specific context made of information that you provide instead of relying on the AI training. And you ground this answer in your context, not the model. So you can be sure that it doesn't talk, for example, if you're in a company context, that it talks about a competitor or something like that. And uh, also because you're able to show what documents were used to generate the response, uh, users can check it by themselves and uh, they can basically have more trust in the answers. So now how does uh, RAG works? First, uh, in the workflow, the user asks a question, then the retriever will search for information in the knowledge base and return documents that may be relevant to answer the question. And then you send both the question and the documents to the generator that will create the response uh, based on the information that was provided. Now to implement that, first you have to create uh, the knowledge base. So, you start by extracting the text from the document, send it to a special AI model that's called an embedding model that will convert your text into a vector. And vectors are interesting because they allow to capture uh, the semantic information of the text as opposed to just capturing the lexical information using the words. So if I say that differently, that means that the meaning of the text is retained regardless of the language used, which can be really useful. So next, uh, you put together the vector along with the original text to create a document, and you store that inside a vector database. So in our case, uh, Cosmos DB. And you repeat this process for every document that you want to include in your knowledge base. Once you have built your knowledge base, you can perform the retrieval and context augmentation process. That's done in three steps. So first, uh, we transform the user query into a vector by sending it to the same embedding model that we used uh, while creating the knowledge base. And after that, we take the vector that was generated to perform a vector search in our vector database uh, to pick up the best matching documents. And finally, we take the text from the most relevant document as well as the initial user question, and we use all of that to create a prompt. So it should be something along these lines, like uh, answer the user's question using the provided documents. And then you send the prompt to the LLM to get your answer. So now uh, let's have a quick look at the code to see how it works and how we can tweak it. So first, uh, for the front end, I will uh, go quickly on that part. Basically, it's all one web component uh, that's located in the chat TS file. I will show you uh, that in VS Code. And uh, for the, the client part, it's uh, calling the backend using this get completion method. And everything is basically implemented in this NPM package that we're using. That's called the Microsoft AI chat protocol. So we're using uh, an API specification that's implemented in this sample, but also in other one uh, that you can see in many other languages like Python, C Sharp, or Java. Uh, so basically, you could reuse this uh, front end with any of our uh, samples that's using the, the same AI chat protocol. 
And for backend, uh, we're using Node.js and Azure function, and we basically have three functions. So I will show you that directly uh, in VS Code. And uh, okay, you're seeing my .on file, uh, but that's okay because something also I did not mention is basically when you're deploying this sample, uh, you can see in there, you can try looking for uh, any API keys, there's none because we're using uh, keyless managed identity. So it's a keyless security mechanism that we're using in Azure for everything. So I can show you it uh, safely, uh, all the values that I use for deployment. And yeah, uh, if you look at the GitHub repo, we're basically uh, having a mono repo. Everything is in a packages folder. We have the web app and the API. And in the API, it's a fa fairly standard Azure function project. And we have this free function in there. So the chat post uh, is the RAG implementation uh, to generate the chat answers. The documents post is uh, basically how we create the knowledge base, starting from PDF. And uh, if you look at how we load a PDF, you can see uh, I did not lie, it's really easy thanks to long chain. So maybe three lines of code, no, not maybe one. But if you want to replace it uh, by something else, it's really easy because you just have to swap that component with any data source that you would like. So for example, Office document, it's also supported by long chain. And the last one is just for loading the original PDF file uh, from blob storage. It's just a pass through. The most interesting one uh, is this chat uh, post document. And to be honest, the prompt part is the most complicated thing in there. It's the, the thing that takes the most line of code. So if, if we scan a bit through the code, uh, you can see that we uh, initialize the clients for Azure uh, OpenAI embeddings, Azure OpenAI chat, and uh, the Cosmos DB NoSQL uh, vector as a vector store. And basically the right process, I'm going quickly, but the right process is just these few lines of code, uh, thanks to long chain abstracting away all the complexity. So if you want to tune it the process, uh, try to uh, change the prompt to make it more fit to your use case. Uh, it's fairly easy to scan through the code, even if you've never done JavaScript before. And uh, yeah, going back to the sample, uh, I made. Uh, I also say that it's very easy to customize it. For example, if you want to, to reuse like uh, this UI uh, chat, uh, you can ver fairly quickly uh, adapt it to your use case. For example, changing the color to, to match your, your brand, uh, changing maybe like the rounded corners if you want it to be more square and stuff like that. So basically it's one component uh, this is the AZC chat component, you see that in there, and you can reuse that uh, in any kind of application. And yeah, if you want to run everything locally, uh, I put the notes in there. Uh, basically, you clone the project, you install all Yammer, there's everything uh, that you need to know in the README, and you just have to run npm start to start both uh, the local function emulator and the uh, web development server for the front end part. And, uh, because you need some documents to get started. Sorry. Uh, after the server is started, you run this npm uh, uh, run upload docs script to send a PDF. It's basically just a REST call to the local HTTP API. So it ingests everything. And uh, I believe we're out of time. So I'm just putting in there uh, all the links to the resources. Uh, if you want to go uh, over the demo, uh, see again all the code, and uh, maybe a bit, know a bit more about Rag. So the demo is this first link in there. I can also uh, copy paste it in the chat. And I believe we won't have uh, time for questions. So thank you. Mm -hmm.